Everywhere on this planet, including in Trondheim, Norway, people employ a certain skill to get from A to B. They orientate themselves. It is this navigation, the knowledge where we currently are and where we want to go, that these two Norwegian scientists devote their professional lives to. I have my bit Musa. I have Edward Musa. We try to find out how the yarn works. And when we study it, we rot it and spring around to spice chocolate. My name is my bit Musa. My name is Edward Musa. We study how the brain works. And then we study rats running around eating chocolate. The Mosers, two scientists, one subject. This is one of their study subjects, a rat. When it's looking for delectable chocolate crumbs, certain specialized cells in its brain are active. As in humans, these cells are probably responsible for orientation. When the rat is walking around, then the brain is making its own map of uh, the local environment. So uh, inside the rat's brain, there are neurons, cells, that uh, actually record where the rat is at any given time. An internal map in rats and also in humans. The map is stored, so whenever you go to a new place, you form a map that you use uh, instantaneously, but at the same time, you also store a copy of it, and this is uh, used next time you come into the same place. This is not stored in a single cell, it's stored in many cells, thousands of cells, and it's stored in the connections between the cells, so that when you come back, you can actually kind of reactivate the same group of cells that was active in the first place. Scientific insights that come from decade-long research on rat biology. My Britt and Edvard Moses' teams have achieved something remarkable. No one has ever come closer to understanding the rat's navigational sense. As the rats are key to their research, the Moses care about their well-being. The rats are part of the team. If we wouldn't have the rats, and if they would not like to collaborate with us, we would have no data. And that is why it's so extremely important for us to, to, to play with the rats and let them uh, be happy, because if they're not happy, if they're not well, they're not going to give us good data. Probably strange for, for some people, but I connect very well to animals and to people. And uh, uh, I think it's important to, to respect any individual, if it's an animal or a human. I think you can call that love. <laughs> to really find out how orientation works, the animals are equipped with an electronic device that allows the researchers to study the processes inside the brain. For this rat, named June, the upcoming experiment is routine. For the scientists, it's an extraordinary opportunity to understand the inner workings of the brain. A wire connects June to a computer that analyzes what goes on inside her head. Without June's cooperation, none of this would be possible. The technological key to studying orientation are so-called tetrodes, tiny tubes that contain even tinier electrodes, these are implanted into the rat's brain. Thus, the researchers can directly measure the activity of specialized cells that play a role in navigation. There are different types of these neurons. So the first ones that were found, place cells, they were found in 1971. So they, we have known about those for a long, long, long time. But then, in more recently, and this is when we came into the picture, 
uh, from 2005 and so on, then actually a number of cells, spatial cells have popped up, cells that have different roles in mapping of, of space. When the rat approaches the side wall, its border cells are active. Other cells for head direction provide a sort of compass bearing. Maybrit and Edvard Moser have discovered yet another type of cell. These are active whenever the rat reaches a certain location. These cells in the brain's hippocampus region help June to gauge distances. When they are active, the computer emits a sound that resembles the pops of frying popcorn. These so-called grid cells form a kind of internal net, a mind map that the brain uses to structure the rat's spatial environment. When June reaches certain coordinates, the grid cell representing the sector sends an impulse. You can see the rat going into a, a, a position or in a location, and you hear uh, the, the activity is going like this. Pop, pop. You know that this is the place field of uh, this specific cell. And what is also exciting about the hippocampus is that if you use, uh, um, if you can record hundreds of such cells at the same time, you can predict the position of the animal with at least five centimeters precision. So it's an amazing system. So you can imagine just hearing all these popcorn sounds when the animal is running around. Fantastic. The rat uses visual landmarks to check its position, like this white piece of paper. But the spatial neurons are relatively independent of optical input. They work as a self-sufficient navigation system. What I find fascinating is that uh, all these cells, they are so high up in a hierarchy far away from the senses. So we know that, uh, uh, what, this, that we can look into how the brain is computing by reading out the signals of these cells. And if that is not fascinating, I don't know what is fascinating. It's just the secrets of the brain that we can just look into. In their quest to unravel the secrets of the brain, the couple are taking on the next big challenge. They now want to find out how the different types of neurons that play a role in navigation work together. On the right. <laughs> this will certainly require a lot of effort, but to the Moses, it's a labor of love. To see that all the hard work is uh, giving a result, it's so fantastic. That's the passion. Yes. <laughs> Isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Passion for a very complex field of research. Studying how rats orientate themselves formed this couple into a duo of world-class scientists, Maybrit Moser and her husband Edvard. Their passion is fueled by the hope to one day comprehend the inner workings of the human brain and, when necessary, to help heal it.